Our quote today is from Neil Donald Walsh. He said, feelings are tricky because feelings are the language of the soul, but you have to make sure that you're listening to the true feelings and not ones that have been constructed by a counterfeit model in your mind. Today, we're gonna to talk about the feels, and I mean the real ones. Welcome to Healing 101, the pod class presented by Sea Bliss Wellness. I'm Gina Cobreth, your teacher, your coach, your guide on the journey. For my returning students, welcome back. For my first time students, I'm so glad that you joined us. Although this is podcast number five, theoretically, this is the first video podcast because I thought it would be nice if you could see my face as well. So if you are consuming this on Spotify, then you can watch it as a video podcast. And I'm sure the other platforms will soon follow. <laughs> if you are not on Spotify, then you can see it on YouTube. Suffice it to say, we have been diving in and doing some real healing work. What happens with that is emotions and stuff start to come up. I wanted to do this particular episode to deal with feelings, how to process our feelings and emotions so we can win at the emotional well-being game. We're still in our live from within unit, getting to know ourselves. The previous lesson we talked about self-talk, inner dialogue, those conversations going on with me, myself, and I, those conversations, and the impact that they can have either positively or negatively, depending on the content of the conversations. Because of course, the internal, good internal di dialogue is, girl, you got this, you can do this, we did this before, come on, you you are one of a kind. This is all you. That is perfectly good because that has a benefit to us. So that's positive. Then you have the negative ones, which are tearing you down, telling you what is going to happen catastrophically or what you aren't or how you failed, any number of things that are negative to you. What to look for to determine whether it is positive or negative. If it's an original thought, if it's encouraging, if it's uplifting, yeah, that internal dialogue all day, every day. But the negative ones are ones that are repeating or recurring thoughts that tear you down, demean you, make you feel bad, or basically take the wind out of your sail and deject you and make you think that you can't do something. Those are the ones that are negative. So the homework assignment that we had was to listen to the internal dialogue and really try to identify any negative patterns that were repeating. If there were one, maybe one to three that you could kind of tackle and listen to them and see what was the incident or the, the genesis of that thought, meaning when was the first time you had that thought? And a lot of times it does go back to childhood or something, a long standing traumatic event. If you did your homework, were you able to recall the first time you have those thoughts, I'm going to look down from time to time. It's just because I'm looking at my notes and I don't want to forget anything. Then for extra credit, who remembers we were going to, what, talk back to those negative thought patterns and just really speak truth to them because nine times out of 10, I'm not even going to say nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, if the negative thought is something from previous experiences that is telling you something about today, it is a no, because yesterday doesn't determine today. We determine what today is going to be, not the thoughts that we had in the past, okay? So talk back to it. The truth is always going to be the best 
anecdote to a negative thought pattern. We're going to practice, practice talking nice to ourselves. Remember, we want to talk to ourselves like we do our friends, our children or people that we love and care for. We want to give them good, kind words. We want to give them uplifting words. Guess what? You should be your loved one. You should be your friend. Talk nice to you. So I hope you practice talking nice to you. And if you didn't, that's okay because you can still do it. This is one of those things that I want us to add to our toolkit and begin to just make this something that is not even something we have to think about. It's just how we operate in life. We talk nicely to ourselves because we love ourselves, right? Okay, so let's get into today's lesson. So we have three learning objectives for today. As I mentioned, we are going to be talking about emotions. What are emotions physically, mentally, spiritually, how they impact us in body, mind, and spirit? Then why are they here at this particular moment? And what do I do with them now? First things first, what they aren't. Feelings are not facts. I know it feels real, like it's something that is true and factual that is happening, not just to you, not just to me, but this is the reality of the situation. But the feelings are your perception of what is happening at this very moment. And your perception is reality to you because it's something that you observe to be true. Is definitely valid to you. And why do you feel that is real to you? Because as the name suggests, feelings, if I give you a definition, they are thoughts that are linked to sensations in our body. So you actually feel it. Every emotion that we have can be tied to something in your body. So if you're mad, you start to feel hot. Your heart starts beating faster. Your blood vessels start constricting. If you're happy, you feel lighthearted. You feel kind of free. Your your body is like relaxed because of the endorphin, endorphins and dopamine that are being released in your body. Definitely, you are physically feeling something, but based on this thought. Because here's the gotcha gotcha. Your body does not know if something is happening in real time or if it's just a thought that you're having. This is why you can watch a movie and feel like you're actually there and the thing is happening to you because your brain does not break it down into real or not real. One of the things that we have as humans is our amygdala. This is basically the thing that keeps us safe. You've heard of fight or flight mode. That is basically a switch in your brain that wants to protect you at all costs. So it feels these emotions coming up and it wants to, the thoughts start to come and so your body is reacting to that and it wants to keep you safe. So if you feel afraid, then it is going to kick something in to preserve you. But the thing is, it doesn't know what is now happening and actually putting you in danger or what is just a thought about something putting you in danger. That is the physical or the body impact of emotion. So there is an analogy that I have heard. Well, actually, the analogy is mine, but I've heard people equate emotions to waves, waves of emotion. So the analogy or the picture that I come up with in my mind for that is if you've ever gone to the beach and if not, Google it, look it up on the internet so you will see it. You will see that waves come in like the very calmest version that really do nothing much but just kind of come onto the sand and smooth it out. If there's like feet footprints or something in it, it just kind of smooths it out and just keeps everything clean and nice and copacetic. 
then the other extreme of that is like a tsunami, whereas it overtakes everything. <laughs> it takes away all the things and the people that are on the shore, everything that's in the water is just being taken into this abyss. abyss. That is the equivalent of unregulated emotion. <laughs> that is what that is like. The other part that we can get to, to use as a picture of this, is people who surf. They ride a wave and they use that wave to take them to new heights, to take them ultimately to where they want to go. So how can we become the surfer in this analogy?